Fix up the screens, they're statically beamed. Granny's records keep a spinning. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, we've got a little bit special today. It's a very rare pre war TV. Uh, this is a Baird 9038T18. Um, believed to be one of only two left uh, anywhere in the world. So we've got quite a rare thing to work on. Now it's just the bare bones, uh, the cabinet's not here. We've just got the chassis to work on. Um, and of course, over the years, this set has been, you know, worked on, looked at over by various kind of collectors. Uh, the, the present owner, I think, has had it for sort of 25, 30 years. Uh, and over the time, various people have looked at it. Uh, but it's now in quite a sorry state. Uh, it is sort of working to a degree. We've got a problem with the CRT, uh, but I've replaced that with another CRT that we've got from stock. You can see uh, various things to say have been done to it. So without me yapping too much more, I'll just flip the camera around and you can have a look at the front. So here it is um, from the front. You can see we've got the, the CRT here. It's a 12 inch CRT. Uh, it came here with a Brymar CRT in it, which was my later, uh, sort of from the 50s, I can work out. Um, but this set only has about 5,000 volts uh, for the EHT. And I think the other tube that the gentleman had fitted was struggling a little bit with that. We couldn't get a decent focus. Um, so that's all. I'm, I'm bringing you into this video sort of halfway through what I've been doing with it. Um, and I'll explain the reasons why. This is a main ZHT television set, and for those of you who don't know, they generate the, the high voltage that the, that the tube needs as via a transformer straight from the main. So um, it's it, they, they were known as, uh, probably not particularly PC now, but they were known as widow makers back in the day because so many TV engineers unfortunately died. Um, because you've only got to touch the wrong part and you don't get a second go at it. So when I was doing the initial sort of looking at it, I didn't want the the, the, the disturbance of having a video camera in my hand. Uh, I just wanted to concentrate 100% um, on what I was doing. So that's why you're sort of bringing you in this far in. So where we are now is say the CRT has been replaced. This is a 1949 um, Ferranti tube, uh, but it only needs 5 kV for the final anode. So we're, this this machine generates about 4849. Um, so we're very close to where this where, where that needs to be for this tube. Uh, as I take you around the side here, you can see it's a proper, you know, beautiful thing from the 30s. I have just temporarily replaced this as the EHT lead that runs up to the neck of the tube. This wasn't covered originally, so um, you could have easily caught your fingers on that and I'd be smoking in my boots. So I just, uh, for now, this is just like I'm, I'm using it as well, we're testing it. Uh, just a little bit added safety. And you can see that red wire comes all the way down there and just fits on the back of that great big valve rectifier. Um, the main ZHT transformer is just hidden down in that hole there. Here's a couple of bleed resistors that someone's fitted at some point just to sort of bleed the EHT away qu fairly quickly. Now, the one thing that is missing from this picture is just here across where these resistors are, there is um, a decent sized uh, capacitor, 5,000 volt, I think this is 0.02 uh, uh, microfarad. A capacitor um, that will pack a punch at 5,000 volts and that's pretty much what's going to finish you off or it's going to probably stop your heart quite quickly. Um, so I'm very careful when I'm working on these sets and hence to say we, we've got to this point without you without me showing you too much else. It has been worked on you can see some of these electrolytic uh, capacitors up here have been restuffed really nicely um, so they're all the ones that are visible. There's a few sort of visible modern replacements. Uh, the things that are visible, the customer's asked to get rid of those so we can sort of make it look a bit more original on the top. He's not overly fussed as to what goes on underneath. Um, he, he, if, if you can't see it, he's not too worried about it, but we just want to try and make it as, as sort of nice looking on top as possible. Um, the initial problem is say we had a problem with the EHT. Sorry, not EHT focus. We couldn't get very good focus, but I think that was partly down to the fact that the tube was, you know, 5 kV short where it needed to be. The original Brymar tube that was in here uh, needed about 10,000 volts, and this, say, only generates around about 5. The gentleman had the, it did actually come with the original 1938 cathovisor tube, but that was as flat as a pancake. Uh, no emission left whatsoever, and even um, speaking to the gentleman in a pretty much darkened room you could just make a picture on the screen so um, it was well and truly knackered so it, that one's long gone sadly um, so we're left with this this franti tube which should work really well a slight mod we're gonna have to do the original tube was a two volt heater uh, this one does need four volts I've been running it for testing off a separate power supply but there's there's four volts floating around on the set anyway because most of the other valves in there are four volt valves so we'll rob a bit of juice um, from the mains uh, transformer 
to fire this up. There's also been a little bit of a modification to, this is a, a new control that someone's fitted at some point because um, the, the, the focus coil here, uh, which obviously focuses the beam before it gets to the tube, uh, obviously th th this isn't the original tube so things have been fiddled with and as we are now it needs a little bit more juice than is available um, as the set is at the moment. I think we might be able to squeak a bit more out of here uh, and get this because it wants around about sort of 80 volts to work, 80, 90 volts there or thereabouts um, and it's only getting like sort of 40, 50 volts from the actual set at the minute but I think the EH, sorry not the EHT, I think the HT is a little low um, so that's what I've been doing today. I've been replacing some of the electrolytic capacitors and you might be able to see under there, there's the old cardboard one which we've restuffed. Um, if I just do that, there's a cardboard condenser we've restuffed. I haven't wired it in yet, so I've got to do that. And there is also a big 8-8 um, eight, eight microfarads, one on the top here. Now that's replaced, you can make out on there, like August 1947. So if that was replaced then, it's done pretty well. But um, all these things are starting to get tired. And when we have got the picture on, we're getting a little bit of hum. Uh, so we can only assume, uh, without doing too much sort of investigation with scopes, they're going to need replacing. So they'll be stuffed um, with new capacitors inside the old box. This is not really going to be, then again, if, for reasons I explained earlier, you're not going to see me working too much on this set. You might sort of get to see it come back once we've done some work on it. Um, but I said, I, I need to concentrate 110% on this. You don't get a second chance if you catch that main ZHT. So what I'm going to do now is put the, uh, the, the, the phone away. I'm going to do a bit more work on it. And, you know, you'll, I'll bring it back when we hopefully get a, a first sort of picture on the screen. I've removed the vision receiver part of the set. We've got a separate sound and vision uh, receiver on here. Um, and you can see, obviously, this is designed to receive, you know, VHF, very high frequencies. So it's, um, it's beautifully built, all in this tiny, you know, all in, tiny, all in these cans. And you can see there's a valve here. There's another one pokes up here. And there's another one in this tin here. Um, but it's beautiful, sort of copper clad. It's, 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 it's a really, really nice piece of uh, sort of engineering from the, from the late 30s. And again, this would have been cutting edge, you know, there's these, as far as I'm aware, these were made by Bush for Baird. Uh, I think Baird actually manufactured them themselves, so this is, and it looks very Bush-like in its construction. Um, when you look at other sort of early Bush TVs. But this, as I said before, the, the customer's happy for, you know, components that you're not going to see uh, easily sort of being replaced underneath without being sort of repacked in. But these sort of things here, I'm going to sort of tidy up. Uh, and get rid of because it doesn't look very nice when looking through the back and you can see sort of modern polyester and plastic and fences and things poking up in the air so we're going to tidy this all up a bit it's a bit scruffy around here some of these wires have just been sort of tacked on so we'll just get a bit of a tidy up you can see there's like a it's like a phillips electrolytic it's been sploshed in there so just got a bit of a tidy up as i said before i'm just going to sort of take you around and show you things on this on this unit um, but there's not really much to see on this this will this will come off as well just nearly lift up Carefully take that that way. And again, a properly tightly packed um, receiver. Let's get a bit more light in there for you. All these little um, micro capacitors, which are normally really good. Um, we'll just obviously double check some of the resistor values. This one looks like it's got quite hot at one point. So just make sure they haven't sort of been barbecuing for some reason. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really, really nice thing to look at. And it's just a real treat to work on it. Just restuffing some of the old uh, BI condensers. Uh, you can see this is the 0.1 mic 450 volt one. Um, these come apart quite easily, really. Uh, the, this is just sort of stuffed inside this cardboard tube and a little couple of plugs just popped in the end of pitch. Um, so, what I'm going to do is just going to fit the two. Uh, I've got two of those to do. Another one I'm just going to start taking apart here. Um, so, once I've got the other condensers ready for that, um, I'll dig them out of the box and we'll dig the innards out this one as well. This is a little tight, more tightly packed so I have to warm this one up a little bit and then we'll get the new capacitors in there. So there's one of the capacitors um, restuffed and you can see it's been uh, refilled. I don't use pitch, uh, I use uh, polyester um, resin um, that is dyed black so to be fair on the top there it looks pretty much like pitch. Um, focuses in. So you shouldn't notice so much difference when it's all back in the set. Uh, and so there's another one left over there doing the same thing. So they're all just 
curing at the moment, uh, and then we get them back in the set. So the restuffed capacitors are all cured and gone hard. They've had a quick coating of um, just clear lacquer as well, just to sort of seal everything back in. And you can see we've got the, uh, the electrolytic back here, and there's a point one and a and a double knot two here. Um, all give it a bit of a wipe over as well. Nothing too mad. Uh, so it doesn't want to look like it's brand new, but it's just nice to have things um, not looking, you know, bright yellow and plastic and that sort of stuff where you can see it. So um, I'm really pleased that that's come up. They all test well. So what I'm going to do now is we'll get that bolted back onto the chassis um, and then we'll you know, move on to the uh, the actual power supply and RF deck. There's, an, there's obviously the, the radio side as well. Um, so the top deck, the top part of the receiver, which is the time bases and the vision receiver have now been uh, worked on. So as I say, we're now going to concentrate on the on the lower deck. Well, I've been right through the... Uh, bottom deck, power deck, whatever they call it in the book. Um, so that's now been recapped and a couple of resistors changed, a few things out of spec. Um, we want this to be as reliable as possible. Um, the main electrolytics that we've done underneath, um, as you can see on here, I mean, this is one that we we, we, we took out. Um, there's a clearly date stamped, uh, a, oh, upside down, sorry, here we are, uh, October 47. Um, so either that was replaced a long time ago um, or it's been you know, replaced reasonably recently, um, but it's just old stock that someone's popped in there. But anyway, they're all starting to show their age, unfortunately. While I've got you around this way, I thought I'd just quickly show you the uh, main ZHT, which is a slightly sort of unusual feature that you don't get to see very often on uh, TVs, um, uh, mainly because it was, you know, deemed quite quickly quite dangerous. I mean, it's, you know, we're generating, as I said earlier on in the video, five... Uh, nearly, nearly 5,000 volts straight off a you know a, a, a mains transformer. Um, the, the problem with that is you need quite a large, uh, because it's running at 50 hertz, you need quite a large smoothing capacitor. Um, so, I mean, this one here is, is 0.02. It's quite small for some of the mains EHT stuff I've looked at before. Like, I've had 0.1s before. Uh, I mean, that's going to pack one hell of a bang uh, if you catch your arm on that. Um, and, you know, Nine out of ten, I think they were fairly fatal. You're not going to come back from it. It's going to stop your heart quite quickly. Um, you will just notice behind there, um, you've got the bleed resistors. I've sort of hidden them behind the the capacitor. Um, they weren't there originally on the original circuit. There was there was no bleed resistors, so you know <laughs> some poor unsuspecting that that condenser would hold a charge for quite some time. So some you know poor unsuspecting engineer could go in there and get a a belt off it, um, and it's a quite possibly fatal one. So. Uh, we've we've got those fitted behind there, so it drags the EHT down within a few seconds. Um, but we still, you know, when I'm testing it, I still go in there and, and act physically make sure it's discharged uh, with a, with an earthen, you know, prod that I've got connected to the chassis. Uh, so I do it two or three times, make sure. I've also got an EHT meter fitted to it, so I can see the EHT going up and down. Uh, behind that, you can see the the EHT rectifier, uh, the HVR2, I think this one is. It's probably good for you know six, seven, eight kV, there or thereabouts. Um, but that's a, something you don't get to see very often. This uh, capacitor at the front here, uh, we've made this. This is uh, the original one was uh, paper and oil, um, and it started to leak. Uh, there was oil coming out, um, so we've uh, you know I've, I've built a new one of those uh, in the style of the original, uh, all in keeping with the same sort of wording and logo. It's it's probably a quarter of an inch longer than the original one, um, but anyway we've, we've we've fitted that in there. Um, so it looks to be, be, be fair, I'm going to say it's all covered up with that. So that goes over there like that and sort of hides it away. So it, does, it gives you a little bit of protection um, you know, when you're working on it. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it's up like that when I'm working. So the next thing I'm going to do is to um, get the actual the, the, the CRT and the, the, the high frequency of the VHF tuner section which is all bolted on that top chassis mounted back on this little um, crate we've got here get that bolted on the top get all the interconnecting leads reconnected uh, the only thing I've still got to do is got to grab some uh, a four volt supply for the tube I'm going to make sure everything's working first we've been I've been quite busy on it today so I want to make sure that everything I've done so far is is working um, but so hopefully the next time you come back and have a look the CRT will be in and you should see a picture Here's the underside of the bear telly. I'll just put some more light on it so you can see it possibly a bit better. Um, 
you can see it's quite a large beast. Uh, this is a, an enormous mains transformer. It's absolutely massive. It must be almost six inches per nearly five. It's huge. Um, and my hand is there. It's, it's absolutely enormous. And that provides, uh, obviously, uh, all the heaters, uh, the four volts. Uh, there's a 20 volt rail off for, for one of the valves as well. All the HT. Um, and here's the transformer for the EHT, which is the, the, uh, the, the extra high voltage one. There's a couple of other, um, you've got a couple of chokes. Uh, there's also the sound output transformer stuck up in that corner there. Uh, and you'll also notice we've got a, another transformer fitted in here now um, because we've had to replace the CRT, as you may remember I mentioned earlier on. Um, and the, the way this circuit was originally wired, I had a separate winding. That's what these two wires here that just been insulated up for now. Um, it originally was powered, say, by that two volt um, AC. The way this telly works is it's a little bit different to how they sort of did things from then on. This, it, they, they actually the, the brightness control there is the bias of the of the cathode, um, which is you know. I, and if I don't put another, I can't use the four volts from the actual set. There's loads of them. There's, there's spare four volts flying around everywhere. I can see quite easily get the four volts for the new tube from there. But the problem is, um, I'm going to end up with a big sort of cathode to heater voltage difference, which isn't very good. So what I've had to do is fit a another little transformer in there, which is going to provide the four volts for the tube. Uh, it's slightly on the wonk, and that's because I've made use of existing um, holes and not sort of drilling things into the into the chassis. So the, the advantage with this one, of course, is if in the future we have to replace the tube again, um, we can use it. It's got sort of uh, it's, there's, there's four volts, six. It goes all the way up, so you go up to twelve volts. So you've got plenty of scope to uh, to work with other tubes. Should we need to in the future? But that's why that transformer has been fitted. Um, but yes, what I'm going to do now, this is what I'll show you under there. There's a lot of this wiring has been, has been put back in. This is all rubber covered. Um, then again, it's underneath. Uh, as I say, the customer's not too worried what looks like underneath, provided it's all safe. Um, you can see there's new uh, electrolytics been fitted in here where the old cans were, but left the cans on the top so they look um, fine from the top. So I'm going to turn this back over, get the actual top deck fitted back on with the CRT, and then we're actually trying to get some uh, a picture on it. Well, I've got the two... Um, chassis put back together on the little um, caddy thing, the little frame. Um, so I'm just going to stick some juice on so you guys can see where we are. I've brought it up slowly just to check the power, but I need to just to make some adjustments to the actual screen. So let's see what happens as she warms up. Um, as I said before, obviously I'm bringing you guys in a bit into this video. I have, I have tested it before, so I know that things are working to a degree, but we've just got a problem with focus. Obviously I've I've changed a few bits around as well. Um, it's poorly focused, and there's obviously there's a problem with the, the um, hold controls as well. What I'm going to do, obviously for obvious reasons, I'm not going to do it while I'm holding the phone because I don't want to grab hold of the wrong bit. Uh, I'll bring it back once we've focused it and, uh, and brought it all back in. So there she is, uh, 1938 Baird T18 doing its stuff. Uh, there's a bit of a hum I can just still notice on the screen. I, I, was, I was assuming that was going to go when we did the smoothest, but that's going to obviously be some um, cathode leakage on a valve possibly or a wire laying close to somewhere it shouldn't. Uh, so we're going to look into that, but you can see that's a pretty good test card C for something that's, you know, from, from 1938. Uh, I think what I've got to do, guys, this is pretty much, because it's not going back in the cabinet here, uh, so we haven't got that. It's going to go back to the customer. I've got a little bit of fettling to do, just sort this hum out. Um, and I think that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this video. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll just leave you with a bit of a hummy test card C. Fix up the screens, they're statically beamed. Granny's records keep a spinning. When the sun goes down